What is going on, Big Blue Nation? Will Turpin, UK super fan here. On today's video, we're just going to do a little quick news and notes, uh, pass on a little bit of info from what's going on around the team this week. I uh, want to thank everyone for all their support, uh, the likes, comments, the shares of my videos. You know, I, I feel super blessed that y'all are checking out my UK content. Uh, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, it helps us with that YouTube algorithm. It uh, gets more eyes on us. Seems like the more likes we get, uh, the more YouTube recommends our videos uh, to other YouTube watchers. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go on this journey with us. Uh, Kentucky, we're scheduled to play Notre Dame here on uh, Saturday. That's going to be a 12 o'clock noon start time, uh, UK fans. So we got an early, uh, early game on Saturday. Uh, my understanding is there's going to be about 3,000 fans allowed in Rupp Arena on Saturday. And uh, this game is going to be nationally televised on CBS. And I will have a video. Uh, it'll be up probably uh, late in the night, Thursday night, early Friday morning. It'll be right there ready for you. Uh, we're going to break down all the key matchups for the Notre Dame game and really just get you all the info that you need Uh to be an informed fan uh, going into the game on Saturday. Now, our Kentucky team, they came back from Atlanta late Sunday night after the Georgia Tech game. They rode a bus back to Lexington, and uh, on Monday they had their uh, one day off for the week scheduled. And, uh, you know, what we found out this week is, though, is that Keon Brooks is going to probably be out at least another week or two. Uh, he's doing some light workouts uh, but no five on five at the moment. Uh, and I, I'll keep you in, up to date on Keon's status as we learn more. Uh, you know, we certainly could use his leadership on the floor. And uh, Cal has discussed that, you know, he's excited about getting him back out on the court. You know, in the last video, we talked a little bit about the challenges that this Kentucky team faces and uh, that they've had to deal with that, you know, other UK teams before them haven't had to deal with. And, you know, if you're a Kentucky fan that's been out there, you know, kind of looking around on the interwebs, uh, you know, you're going to see that, you know, our basketball program is sort of being presented as, as if, you know, the oh, the sky is falling, you know. Uh, you know, we're not 10-0. and 0. We haven't beat every team by 30 points. And, you know, in a lot of basketball pundits' eyes, you know, Kentucky's just not Kentucky basketball unless we're undefeated beating everybody by 30. Um and they're sort of presenting uh, our program and our players and uh, in, in a sort of a, you know, a negative light, obviously. And, and I can understand a one and three start, but uh, again, you can beat the dead horse sometimes. And, uh, you know, I'm going to look to try to switch the narrative um, uh, and be a little different than everybody else that's kind of covering this team. And, uh, you know, if you follow me in my videos, uh, you, you know, you're probably uh, – a big Kentucky fan, and, uh, you know, through the good and the bad, and, uh, you know, I, you know, I'm going to be watching Kentucky 10 years from now, 20 years from now, if the Lord's willing, and, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, we're lucky just to even have college basketball. I mean, it could have easily have been canceled, and, and it still could end up being canceled, but, you know, when I talk about, you know, switching the narrative, really, uh, you know, if you look out there, like I said, on that interweb, you're seeing, you know, all Kentucky's been kicked to the curb. You know, our season's a failure. Uh, there's no coming back from a one and three start. On and on and on and on. You know, but I, I look at this a little bit differently. I look at it like, you know, Kentucky can now be uh, Cinderella. You know, we can now be the little engine that could, so to speak. Uh, you know, we're the underdogs. You know, we're not the biggest dog on the biggest porch with the biggest bite no more. And for some, you know, that's hard to accept and hard to deal with, but it is reality. But, you know, I think Kentucky, you know, now, though, once they learn to play together and really come together as a team over these next few weeks, I think they can play loose. Um, after all, we're not ranked. Uh, you know, we've already been wrote off. You know, we're not going to be a factor in this year's NCAA tournament. You know, Cal has lost it. Uh, he don't, you know, he longer, uh, you know, has the ability to turn it around. And according to the internet, you know, you know, and if it's, you know, if it's on the internet, it must be true. So, you know, doesn't look good for our program. Like I said, if you're looking around on the internet, but, um, 
you know, unfortunately, I do, you know, as I follow the team, it's a necessary evil, unfortunately, for me to, to sort of follow uh, along a little bit on social media and, and you know, on Twitter and whatnot. But, uh, but there are some folks out there that cover the team and uh, through a little bit more of a balanced uh Lens, you know, uh, one right here in Danville, Larry Vault, uh, Vault's Views at Vault's Views on Twitter. Uh, you know, he does a really good job, I think, of you know, and always has of trying to be a little bit more balanced with his coverage, and uh, and he also actually retweeted our last video, and that was quite a blessing, and it, and it got a lot more eyes on us actually, so I was super thankful for that. But you know, uh, you know, I understand. You know, bad basketball is bad basketball. You know, we can't sugarcoat it. I mean, I can't sugarcoat a, a three for twenty three from downtown. I can't sugarcoat a twenty one turnover game. So you know, we're going to criticize the team when they're when they're not playing well, and or at least we're going to criticize the mistakes. But um, you know, at some point, you know, you're just beating a dead horse, and I, you know, and I kind of feel like there's a lot of that beating the dead horse going on around here. But in this video, we're gonna. We're going to get right to the to what I feel like is we've got some positives to look at for how we can turn this thing around. And uh, one of those big positives, I think, is uh, number one is classes have ended earlier than normal, um, you know, before the Christmas break. So, you know, that's going to be a huge asset. And I'll tell you why, because now, you know, Kentucky can go three times a day if they want to. Uh, you know, for the first time since this team has been assembled, um, they can actually play basketball as a group with no distractions. And, you know, that's going to be a, a key, key part of us turning this thing around is actually being able to focus on basketball, um, you know, and, and, and block a lot of stuff out. So what we, what we can say is Camp Cal is officially started. It started on Tuesday. Um, I'm actually recording this video on Wednesday afternoon, so Camp Cal has is, is, is been going on for two days now, and, you know, normally what we see during Camp Cal is Cal is able to take all the deficiencies of his team and really analyze and experiment with different things, and that's what he'll be doing this week. Uh, he'll be, you know, really trying to uh, dial in on how to get this team improved, and typically we always see... Uh, Cal's teams perform better, uh, usually uh, mid-January, once they've gotten finished with this uh, Camp Cal. And, and Camp Cal is, is difficult on the players uh, because, you know, it's 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 going to require a lot of energy. But at the same time, the, the practice time that they're going to be able to get is going to be a huge uh, benefit. Now, the next thing that I think is really uh, a positive about uh, – what we can look at is, is you know, Cal, you know, the other night he said, uh, you know, he's super excited about the challenge, you know, and, uh, you know, he may uh, not see the comments, you know, that's being made, uh, you know, as far as the current narrative about him and the team, uh, but he knows, he, he, you know, he knows what's, what's, you know, going on, he knows what's being said, and uh, he's super motivated. And he's excited about turning this thing around. And, you know, if you're, uh, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited the fact that he's excited, I guess you could say. And if, if you're watching this video right now, um, you probably agree with me on this one. That, and you know, a, a cow that's riled up a little bit and, uh, you know, uh, motivated even more to turn things around that that's a positive for for our program and so we got a group of players and a coaching staff that's uh really really keyed up to get this thing headed in the right direction um the next thing i want to talk about is is you know cal talked about in the tech game how we move the ball better and uh we did we, we moved the ball better and we got better looks from three and uh we ended up shooting, I think, forty-one, a little over forty-one percent from three-point range in that game against Georgia Tech. Now we ended up being undone, you know, because of the twenty-one turnovers that ended up leading to thirty-four easy Georgia Tech points. But in just three days of working on the ball movement and trying to get better looks from downtown, we did execute and and get better. So this team has shown that. You know, just from that, that they can learn and they can get better. And we saw it, like I said, we saw a little bit better ball movement 
uh, not great. You know, we still tried to make the impossible pass instead of making the easy pass, and Cal talked a lot about that this week. Um, but nonetheless, we did improve, and we shot the ball better from downtown, and we can shoot the ball. We shot 41%, like I said, in the Georgia Tech game, and without the turnovers, we probably would have been fine. But, uh, you know, and the next thing um, is, is, you know, Cal, he knows what the deficiency of this team is. You know, he knows that it's getting tougher uh, and valuing each possession more is, is what's going to be the key. And, and he's uh, he talked about that extensively the other night, uh, that, you know, that's going to be the focus as Camp Cal gets underway is, is, is uh, you know, playing, playing tougher and valuing the ball and valuing the possession and, and treating each one like gold. And that, so I think we'll see some improvement. I think, you know, in this next week or two, I think we'll see a lot of improvement in that area. I think the turnovers will go down. And, um, you know, when you stop turning the ball over and you're running back the other way, a lot of times it gives you a chance to maybe create some more turnovers, which is also hurt Kentucky's. We haven't created enough turnovers. So, like I said, I thought that was a positive that we're going to really be focusing on valuing the possessions. Uh, the last thing we'll hit on here before we get out of here is, uh, uh, you know, Cal talked to the other night about, you know, normally his teams would be coming over to his house once or twice a week. And, uh, you know, just getting together, at, you know, and, and doing team building, just being a family together. And uh, they haven't been able to do that. You know, they haven't done that at all because they were just trying to be so cautious with the virus and, and, um, uh, Really, that's put the team back uh, quite a bit. And he said that, you know, basically they were going to come back and get tested on, I guess, Monday or Tuesday. And if everything was good, you know, he was going to have them over to the house for some movies and maybe to hang out and just so this team can get to know each other. Because it's one thing we're not taking consideration. And is, uh, you know, this team has literally been. Uh, and I said it in the last video, but I'll reiterate it as we close here. You know, they're pretty much just going to practice uh, across the street from their dorm. And they're staying away from each other in, in the building. Like, they're not all huddled up in a room playing video games and this, that, and the other. They're not getting to go out to the Fayette Mall in groups and hang out and be celebrities around town like all the other UK players in the past have got to do. Now, they're, they're having to stay inside those rooms, and they're not even socializing amongst each other. I mean, they have that uh, contact tracing on, and they're staying eight feet apart at all times. So... You know, they're not even getting to develop, you know, uh, you know, their own relationships amongst each other and getting to know each other. It's just a really odd scenario to have to, you know, try to, you know, I think the word is jail. You know, if you look around the country at the teams that are playing good right now, that, you know, they've had some experienced players that have been together for a few years, and that's what they've done. They've just jailed. And Cal has always done a magnificent job of even taking young kids and getting them together and in a short period of time, getting them jailed together and getting them playing well. But, uh, you know, you do have to have the time. You know, he's always had, you know, these guys playing in the summer, as I said in the last video, you know, they played in the summertime with players that were experienced members of, you know, that had been here at Kentucky before. And when you take all that stuff away uh, and you don't have any time to play together, it's just impossible to jail. You're just not going to, you know, run out here and pick a bunch of people and throw them together and and with no work and no practice or no nothing. I don't care who you are. I mean, you can take the best players in the NBA and throw them together with no time to practice and no jail time at all. I mean, they're not going to look as good as they're going to look a couple of months later. So, you know, like I said, I think these are positives for Kentucky as this time over the next few weeks, Camp Cal is underway. Um, I believe Cal will get this team playing in better, you know, in a better fashion here over the next week or two. So let's just, you know, as I said the other night again, better days are coming, Big Blue Nation. Better days are coming. Let's stick with these boys and uh, and support them, you know, and seeing positive vibes their way and uh, and hope they can get her turned around. I'll I'll be back here with you with you guys uh, tomorrow. Uh, let's see, what is today? Wednesday, so it'll be late in the night tomorrow night. You'll probably wake up Friday morning to the uh, 
uh, Notre Dame preview video. Again, I appreciate all your support. Uh, it's, it's been a blessing. Feel free to comment down below. You know, if you have any uh, thoughts, suggestions on future videos, topics, uh, uh, you know, I'm going to try my best to get better at these videos as we go, uh, but I love interacting uh, with the ones that I've got to interact with so far. So yeah, feel free to, you know, comment down below, uh, hit the like button, you know, like I said, and if you, you know, feel so inclined, you know, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and we'll, we'll be here with you all the rest of the season. Go Big Blue, and I will be back with you on the next video. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.